So at the top of the episode, I said that I would make a couple of comments about my remarks at the recent NFDA ESPS meeting that happened in Minneapolis. It was a great success, I would say. There were, I believe, 32 rooms going where the meetings were being held. And this is sort of like fastener speed dating, where companies would have a room for half an hour and companies interested in meeting with them would round robin through all the rooms. It's a great way to get a lot of introductions and other business done in a short amount of time. So I participated in the event and appreciate the invitation to moderate the closing session, which was a panel discussion discussing the state of the industry, basically. There were probably 75 people who stuck around till the end. I know a lot of people peel off at the end of these conferences usually, off to catch planes and so forth. But we had a good room full of people. And I'll tell you, I did not get there for the opening, and I missed the ITR economics presentation, which was, I believe, on the first day. And so, of course, when I got there and I was comparing notes with everybody, how's it going, what did you hear, what did ITR say, and so forth, I was actually a little surprised because, not that I wanted to rain on anyone's parade, but I was shocked at how upbeat everybody was after that session. So you heard perhaps on Mike McNulty's conversation with Nick Ritz that ITR is pretty sure we're not going to see any kind of a major recession in the near future. What little slowdown we do feel, they think, is going to result in a so-called soft landing. And since fastener distributors, by and large, have more orders than I think they've ever seen in their histories, people are feeling pretty good. So Overall, it was, a, I thought, a pretty good mood, which, you know, again, I'm not trying to rain on that parade, but I guess I kind of agree with Nick in that I think there are a few things out there that should be making us a little bit more measured in our optimism. Pretty sure Alan Greenspan one time referred to irrational exuberance in the market, and it might have been cases like this that he was thinking about when he coined that phrase. It made me remember several years back when I was at another NFDA meeting, and that time I had the chance to actually attend the ITR session. I don't recall if it was Alan or Brian Bewley. Those are the two top guys over there, super, super professional, very knowledgeable guys and highly respected in the fastener industry and in many other industries as well. But at the time this meeting took place, being able to search the web on your phone was still kind of a novelty. And during the question and answer period, after the presentation, I raised my hand and asked about a recent headline that I'd seen that really stunned me. And it had to do with some OPEC countries making oil deals in a currency that was not the U.S. dollar. Now, many of you know that the U.S. dollar is the so-called world reserve currency, and although petrodollars may be a little bit of an archaic term, it's still used out there, and it still is used to represent this idea that world reserve currency has some meaning and it has a role in the world economy. The point is, if the OPEC countries were ever actually to do oil deals in a different currency, that would be a big thing because it would represent a major, major shift in the way that things operate. Leave it at that. It's a complicated topic, but for the purpose of the conversation, that's enough. So Alan or Brian, whichever one it was at that day, was really taken aback, and and they actually didn't believe that I'd gotten the headline right. So I wasn't trying to cause problems. I wasn't trying to be a smart aleck or anything. I really genuinely questioned this because I, I, I realized that this would be a big deal had it been accurate. And he basically just dismissed it. Well, there was another gentleman in the audience and he also had a smartphone, just kind of a pioneer. And uh, he raised his hand and he said, no, no, actually, this is a headline. It's out there. I found it. And I, I was actually kind of glad somebody <laughs> validated my question But there really was no answer to this. And then we broke for the intermission, and in the hallway, a few people came up to me and said, wow, I've never seen those guys stumped before. And again, my purpose was not to stump anybody or make anyone look bad. It was simply to say, hey, isn't this something we should be paying attention to? And what does this all mean? 
And truthfully, I don't know whatever happened to that headline. It could have been some kind of, I don't know, fake news. Was that even a thing at the time? But it never amounted to much, clearly, because the world order continued. And I'm, again, I think this was in the early 2000s. So here we are. But we're in a much different world today, are we not? I mean, there are major things going on everywhere. Look around. We all know. We can all see this. And what's the backdrop to this? Well, the kleptocrats in Washington, of all parties, by the way, are spending money at levels that nobody ever could have imagined, even a few years ago. That's gone a long way to adding to the inflation. I mean, one of the causes we're led to believe is the expansion of the money supply, so more dollars going after goods. I mean, there's a lot of debate about this, but that's one common belief. But what about this? And here's the thread pill. At a certain point, the international community will lose faith in this ever-expanding fiat currency, it seems to me. And how would that look if that happened? Well, I guess we would start to see headlines like the one I thought I saw back at that NFDA meeting years ago. And then lo and behold, what do we have happening now? Well, as I noted during my remarks at the ESPS meeting last month, the BRICS nations just had their own international economic forum in St. Petersburg, and much was discussed about their new trade alliances and trade routes and so forth, Russia, China, Brazil, India, others. And in concert with that, this came out previous to that, but I don't know if ITRs built it into their models. Oh, they're trading energy in rubles and they just happen to be backed by gold, everybody. Hmm. Eh, maybe it will be a soft landing, though. And I hope it is a soft landing. I really do. I really do. And I hope you get out there and sell a lot of screws, too. <laughs> everybody, enjoy your summer. For Brian Musker, this is Eric Dudas. We'll talk to you next time. Fully Threaded Radio is a production of Fasteners Clearinghouse.